Hi guys, welcome back to Chamber of Chess. Sorry for the absence. I was actually sick for the last month. Uh, and I thought I wasn't in the best shape to record a video. So today I'm going to show you one of my games with an opponent that I played quite a few times. And this game was particularly memorable for me due to the end game position. And it's really interesting. I'm going to show you. So I started with a standard Sicilian variation for me. I really wished I had a better repertoire back then. I could have played French or Karokan or Scandinavian even. But I would just really stick with this um, Sicilian variation. Bishop c5. Normal, but right now I prefer knight f6 because there is nothing to be scared of. Especially e5 because queen a5 and he loses the pawn eventually. Bishop c5. So when I play bishop c5, bishop a7, I really want to keep my bishop on this diagonal. Though in that case, I really should consider knight c6 or knight e7. Because after knight f6, this knight gets under potential e5 threat. And let's say knight d5, queen g4, and now white holds great initiative on the king side. King f8 is the only move here for me, because castle, bishop h6, g6, and I just lose an exchange in order to protect myself against this g7 checkmate. It's a kind of trap. Or black. So knight f6, he played queen e2, which like I said is not that accurate. Uh e5 would have been I mean no, e5 is for him. So later I could have played e5, queen e2, bishop g5, so far so good. D6 was also an option. D6 here, king h1, knight c6, e5 here. I could have played e5 right here with um Slightly better position for black. F4, E5, Knight, E5. This knight looks really great in front of the pawn where there are no supporting pawns to drive away my knight. Though this position is bad because my H pawn would look really better on H7. Because on H6 is more chances for him to attack it and my king is more exposed. H7, Queen H4. Here I found a rather interesting resource, F5, to just sacrifice my pawn. The idea is that I still hold two bishop advantage, and uh, I'm looking forward to get rid of the F pawn weakness, especially of this one. I just give it away. At the same time, I aim for a queen trade. That gives me more chances to secure my weak king. Otherwise, my king is very bad and it gives him more chances to checkmate me later. We trade and h3, rook g8. The reason why I didn't take on e4 was just check. And still, my king is under, well, potential um, threats. Rook g8, pigs, f6. I like this move, though it's not that accurate, because knight d3 and um, take rook g5 would just uh, would have been faster and would hold my initiative by attacking f5 pawn. f6, knight c3, take, take, rook g5. Exactly the same variation I showed a while ago, and it's still good for me. Knight e4, take, of course he could have just taken on f6 with an x-ray because Rook is protecting the knight. Well, it's still fine for black. He played Rook f5, take. As you can see, black is a pawn down, but two bishops are really strong and it even gives, it gives black an upper hand here. b5, knight c3. We trade, still I hold an advantage and it gets more and more with every move. Bishop b4, bishop f1 was also an option.
Knight f4 check, king f5, rook f3. Um, I could have really played bishop f3, uh, though I thought that this position is not as good as the one I got, though it's also completely fine because I have a bishop versus knight, which doesn't really have uh, many places to go. My rook is active, my king is extra active because it's threatening to take on h3, then, um, well, not to g3 directly, but later, once this, I drive this knight away, my king gets active, and especially with a checkmate threat on h2. So I took with a rook with the idea of capturing with bishop and capturing the knight, getting two bishop advantage versus rook. We play chuck, like I showed the variation is this, with a fork, King g6, e2, I take, check. I was really hoping that this position is the perfect one for me. And actually, it's true. It's not that clear yet. I mean, white def uh, black definitely is winning. So I still need to go for a right technique here. My bishops are going to the center to get more squares. In the enemy zone, rook d1, bishop e6, h5. I really consider this move very important because it starts the mating structure against the enemy king. Rook e1, king f6. I'm just, I just keep moving forward, pressing my enemy. As you can see, bishops are covering all important squares where the rook might go. And here, enemy resigns because it ends with a potential bishop e6 check. Or even in case he moves his rook away, I don't even have to take it because bishop g2 is a direct checkmate. And here, after king f1, there are no more checks. And white has to resign. That's it. Subscribe, write your comments, like this video. And if you like this format, I'm going to continue with posting another game from Chesscom or maybe some memorable tournament. Sorry for the absence. I'll make sure to post more videos sooner.